the lance weapon. How did we turn from this? To something like this. Actually, I don't have much idea about this weapon. After playing Monster Hunter for, I don't know how long exactly, but for every Monster Hunter I've played, out of all the 14 weapon types this game has introduced, I've mostly spent my time on one, two weapon types, greatsword and longsword. Sure, I'll sometimes use the rest of the weapon types here and there, but lance weapon it's a different story for the longest time i never really understood the lance weapon i've seen some players use this weapon and in my head the lance weapon looks kind of boring to use to be honest like not only that it doesn't look that strong either apparently if we take a look at the weapon popularity charts lance is one of the least popular weapon Rather, only a few players main this weapon. But who cares about these weapon popularity charts? How do I feel about this weapon? Okay, that sounded way too dramatic. Okay, okay. Using the lance in the first generation was a bit of a challenge. Liar. I didn't have a hard time. For the sake of this story, just think of this as my internal monologue before I got used to the weapon. Okay, I'm used to using weapons wherein I can evade monster attacks, but man, what is this weapon? Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. We, we have a shield, and that's something that I have to use. And the only evade that I can do is a backhop evade. Look, I'm not used to guarding monster attacks, okay? I know, pathetic. Not only that, but I also had a hard time repositioning myself with this weapon. Like, my muscle memory keeps telling me to sheath the freaking weapon. Or I could just do this. It's something that I've seen from other Lions players. Okay, okay. A bit of a backstory here. During the early days of Monster Hunter, unlike the future Monster Hunter titles wherein we have like 14 weapon types, <clears throat> except for Monster Hunter Try. But in the first generation of Monster Hunter, there were only five Blade Master weapons to choose from. There is the Great Sword, Hammer, Sword and Shield, Dual Blades, and lastly, Lance. From what I've read online, out of these five Blade Master weapons, Lance was remarkably strong, or rather, one of the strong choices back then. It's just. <sighs> Look, it's the mobility, okay? I know. I mean, of course, you have a giant shield and a long stick. Evading with the lance isn't a great idea. The weapon is really heavy. And I mean, sheathing the weapon takes a lot of time. It requires commitment, just like in real life. But yeah, the movesets of the lance in game are quite straightforward. There's the upper poke, and there's the shield guard, and the coward guard poke. While charging also with a lance, you can end it off with a strong thrust. I genuinely thought this was introduced in 2nd gen. Then comes my experience with the weapon in 2nd generation. And from what I've noticed, lance got... Yep, that sums it up. For the past two generations, the lance weapon only has a limited amount of movesets. However, in the third generation of Monster Hunter, they finally introduced a few more movesets to the weapon that would carry on for the rest of the generations. Counter thrust. So apparently in this generation of Monster Hunter, Lance could now do a counter move. Wait, is this the first counter move introduced in Monster Hunter? I have to admit, the move is quite useful. It can brush off monster roars and certain monster attacks. 
Okay, okay. Interesting start. What else can it do? Side sweep. Side sweep attack. I don't feel like ranting on how I wish this was introduced before. Huh? There's a lot to uncover in the fourth generation. In fact, this was the generation that hooked me into using the lance weapon. But it is where I also faced a significant problem. More about that in a bit. In this generation, they've added some basic movements to the weapon. Unlike in the third generation where you can barely move around after guard dashing, this time you can continue the movement with a few side steps and an upward poke, which is a great addition. Since this is the Monster Hunter where they've introduced more vertical terrain, the Lance Weapon also got some new interactions with the ledges. Like, you can continue charging with the Lance even after jumping from the ledge, or the other way around. Furthermore, there was also a new playstyle discovered in this generation, Evade Lancing. I've seen this Lance gameplay before, but it wasn't as crazy as this one. Unlike the traditional way of playing Lance where you'd pick up skills such as Guard, Guard Up, with Evade Lancing, of course, you'd be taking Evade skills like Evade skill plus 1, 2, 3, Evade Distance. I know, it's quite an odd playstyle, but hey, it works. Although this was just the beginning for the Lance weapon, because the next Monster Hunter title changed the land significantly. Monster Hunter Generations introduced hunting styles. This changes the way you play the weapon. Just a side note, there's a lot of lands hunting styles in this game. I'll quickly run you through some of them, but I'll share more details on the ones that are commonly used. Guild Style Lands. It's the classic lands playstyle, although they've added something. It's just three small hits at the end of the three poke combo. Eh, I don't like it. This is a lance playstyle that you'd pick if you enjoy guarding or countering. Wait, this sounds so stupid. Isn't that what the lance is about? So, if you perfectly guard against an attack, there's no stamina loss, chip damage, or even a knockback. Afterward, it lets you perform a double side sweep follow up attack. You can do this multiple times too. Lastly, the most preferred lance playstyle. Striker, ker, 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 ker. Hello there, are you looking for something? Yeah, I've tried other hunting style, but somehow it didn't feel right. No worries, you're in the right place. I've got something for you. Oh, I'm so sorry, bad habit of mine. Alright, here's uh, what I've got for you. Huh? Do you hate that multi-hit poke from the guild style? Boom! This style gets rid of it. Do you like charging your lance? Boom! The charging finisher move of this lance was said to be busted. What? Three? Hunter arts? Wait, what are hunter arts? Hunter arts are special moves that the weapon can perform. The ones that I like to have in my lance playstyle are... Corkscrew Jab after watching Gren Logan, you can shove the monster with a powerful drill move that deals multiple hits with a long range compared to the usual lance pokey poke moves. In Rage Guard, you can absorb monster's attacks depending on how strong it was. You gain a damage buff based on that. There's no knockback, stamina loss, nor chip damage. Lastly, there's Shield Assault. Basically, you charge forward with your shield in front, guarding any incoming attack with no knockback and stamina loss. Or as I would like to think it's true. But there's also other crazy moves that you can do. Absolute Evade. It's a long evade move. Absolute Readiness. A long evade move that sharpens a weapon, plus it's useful for repositioning. Now, imagine that you can pick three of any of these arts while using Striker Lance. It has become a 
the strongest playstyle of the lands. Then comes Monster Hunter World. Now before we continue, I would like to take back what I said a while ago. This weapon wasn't as boring or weak as I thought it would be. I like this weapon a lot. I see myself crafting a bunch of crafting different lance weapon. What's the point of crafting different lance weapons? Just as I began to like this weapon in this generation, I was faced with the problem that I severely encountered like with my main weapon, Greatsword. Elemental Weapons For the past few years of playing Monster Hunter, raw damage have always dominated the what weapons to craft list, with a few exceptions to some weapons. Why? Because they are usually stronger than elemental weapons. I could craft elemental lance weapons, but to me, it doesn't feel as compelling to use compared to raw damage lance weapons. Then comes Monster Hunter World. The movements, they felt more natural or fluid than older Monster Hunter titles. Like this, this, and especially this. Hunter arts and styles are gone, so we're back to the guild style moveset. And they brought back the old 3 poke combo, which is great. They also added these movements. After you do a guard dash, you can do a leaping move. And there's this new move called power guard. Unlike the normal guard move, you take more chip damage when guarding, but you gain knockback resistance and ability to guard in 360 degrees. And there's also this attack on titan move called clutch clock counter. But here's the thing, is the elemental lands playstyle great in this Monster Hunter title? Well after reading a bunch of discussions online and watching a few guides, it's alright. Still not as great as going full raw damage on lands. But hey, at least elemental lands playstyle has improved compared to the older generations. The set most often used for the Elemental Lance playstyle is the full Safi Jiva armor, and the Lance weapon used alongside the Safi Jiva armor would either be Kult Taroth's weapons or Safi Jiva's weapons. There are a bunch of mix sets out there maximizing the raw Lance playstyle. Most of them would have this new skill called Offensive Guard. It increases your attack after you timely guarded the monster's attack, but Despite all these improvements to the lance weapon, a lot more has happened in Monster Hunter Rise and Sunbreak. Hunter styles and arts are back, sorta. They added a mechanic called switch skills and silkbind moves to the weapon. Switch skills are basically a variation of the weapon's moveset, and silkbind moves are like special moves that use the newly added mechanic called Wirebug. Here's a few switch skills that they added on the lance weapon. The shield charge. This replaces the forward charge attack and turns it into a sprinting shield charge. While you are sprinting, you can block any incoming attacks. Insta block. This replaces the regular guard and turns it into an insta block. And as for the silk bind, there's twin bind. It attaches a wired kunai on the monster then, the lance weapon can jump forward, towards the monster, and attack. Basically a gap closer. There's Anchor Rage. This move absorbs the monster's attack and powers up the lance temporarily. And lastly, there's Spiral Thrust. It's an attack that launches you forward. When you time it correctly before an attack, it can absorb the damage and power up the lance temporarily. So far, I like the variety of moves that you can do with the lance. In Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, they gave a few more silk bind and switch scale moves to the lance. On top of that, there is a mechanic that lets you change the weapon's movesets on the go. It's a counter move with the shield, and you can knock out monsters. I've noticed this move opens up to another combo, unlike the traditional combo wherein after poking with the lance three times, you reset the combo by doing a back hop. 
This time you can just do a shield tackle, which is great. There's also the new silk mine moves like Skyward Thrust. So what you do is you wire bug up in the air and crash down with the lands. And another wire bug move that came in handy in this update is the wire bug evade. It lets you evade and sheath the lands instantly. It's quite handy if you're avoiding huge monster attacks in Sunbreak. On top of all that, lands players would also get these skills. One more thing about the lance weapons in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Elemental lance weapons are now stronger than ever. Finally, I can happily create elemental lance weapons like what I've always dreamed of. The lance weapon has changed a lot since the early generations. It's not as boring as I thought it would be. I don't know if I persuaded you on that, but hey, give it a try. Who knows, you might even use it as a main weapon in Monster Hunter.